you're in Ecuador and you're loving it, but your three month allowable stay is almost over and you want to extend, what do you do? Friends, we got you covered in this video. This video is about how to extend one time your tourist visa in Ecuador. We're Aaron Laurie and we've been living in Ecuador for over three months now and we just recently went through this process. And because there's not much information online, we wanted to share with you the very simple process and what we went through to extend our visa. It's a, four, a quick four step process and there'll be a bonus section at the end. We use the Migración office located in La Libertad, which is a kind of a suburb to Santa Elena and Salinas. The Migración office in this town, La Libertad, is called the CAC Citizen Center, or in Espanol, it's called the Centro de Atención Ciudadana. This office was super quiet and the best option if you find yourself anywhere in southern coastal Ecuador, especially if a person wants to avoid any of the bigger cities like Manta or Guayaquil. For us, we did not want to travel inland from the coast and we did not want to hit the big cities and it was only an hour away for us from where we were living via the bus. So it was the perfect option. So wherever you are in coastal Ecuador, you would take the bus and get to Santa Elena. Once you're at the big land bus terminal in Santa Elena, you get on the number 13 bus and go towards the El Paseo Big Shopping Center. Get off at the Big Shopping Center and then it's walkable to the CAC office. So here are the details of what we did and the simple process you can follow to extend your visa. Step number one is to make sure you have all your documents in place and you only need three things. You need your passport, a color copy of your passport and cash. So I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit here because we didn't prepare ahead of time and get our color copies, more on that later, I was sick. But we got our copies the very morning once we found the immigration office, we went across the street, there was a photocopy place, it was 70 cents, easy peasy. So step number two is to find the nearest Migración office and go there. So as I mentioned earlier, the office we used was in the small town called La Libertad. The Migración offices open at 8 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. and we went at 9 a.m. We wanted to give lots of time to do the process because we really weren't sure. If you get there at 8 or 9 or 10 a.m., you're gonna be fine. The entire process took us four hours once we arrived at the immigration office. And when we got to the Migración office, there was nobody around. We walked straight up to the immigration counter and were served immediately. So when you get to the Migración counter, you hand the agent your passport and the, the color photocopy and you ask for the one-time visa extension. The agent does all the work after that. Um, after a few minutes, they're going to hand you back a pretty small piece of paper with some information on there. We've heard sometimes the passport and your names are already filled in, but in our case, they weren't. So you take a minute and fill in your name and your passport number, and that's the end of step two. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, now's an excellent time to press the like button. Step number three is to go to the bank to pay your fees. You must only go to Banco del Pacifico, the agent will tell you this, and they can also write down an address if you don't know where to go to find a bank. For us in La Libertad, we had two options. We could go to a Banco del Pacifico right in La Libertad or another one a little farther away in Salinas. We were told that the lines would probably be longer in La Libertad, so we opted for a longer taxi ride and we went to the one in Salinas. When we got there, there was a pretty hefty line and we waited almost an hour in that line anyway. When you get to the front of the line and it's your turn at the bank, you simply just hand the agent your little slip that the immigration officer gave you and that's it. When, when the bank bank teller is ready, they ask you for your amount to pay and you hand them over cash only. We asked around about credit card and other ways to pay and to our knowledge, there's no other way. As of January 1st, 2023, the fees to extend your uh, visa in Ecuador are 150 US dollars per person. Once you've paid your fees, the bank teller is going to hand you back a receipt and a little blue piece of paper that shows that you've paid. Just double check that your name and your passport are correct because you want to make sure that's correct at the bank before you travel all the way back to the immigration office, which is step number four. Step number four is to travel all the way back via taxi to your immigration office. Has to be via taxi. <laughs> you want to hand the immigration officer your receipt from the bank and the immigration officer will take it from there. They hand you a sheet of paper, which is a kind of a questionnaire and it took us only five or 10 minutes to fill in. 
your personal information, and a question as to why do you want to stay in Ecuador longer. And that's it. When we handed her our questionnaire back, she didn't even look at it. Um, and then after a couple of more minutes, she hands you back an official immigration extension. Don't lose your immigration extension. It's literally the only piece of paper that proves that you did this process. It's officially stamped on the front and back and embossed with their logo. It indicates the last day that you're legally allowed to stay in Ecuador. We tend to try to follow the rules of each respective country. And obviously we encourage you to try to do the same. For sure. Okay, time for the bonus section when to do this process. Part of this felt really weird for us, but you, you want to go into the Migración office on your 91st day. It feels super weird to let your, your allowable stay in a country lapse because you're technically illegal, but those are the rules. You want to do your best to go in on the 91st day, but there is a bit of a grace period and we'll tell you our experience. Our first 90 day visa expired on February 20th, right in the middle of Carnival. All offices countrywide are closed for four days. On top of that, I got ill and was sick in bed for a day or two. So we couldn't get into the immigration office until February 24th. We were four days expired, really. We're kind of just here to tell you that if you had anxiety, I had some anxiety, air was pretty calm about it, but I'm just here to tell you that you really don't need to have any. There's no official grace period, but the officer at the Migración office was really quite lenient and sweet with us and had no problems that we were four days overdue. So you'll be fine. Like most of these countries, they don't really want to kick you out. That's not their goal. They would much rather have your cash in exchange for the extension. So if you've got the cash, once they get it, things go really smooth. Really smooth. And we, we want to come and tell you this to help you out too. What if your first 90 day tourist visa expires on a Friday? What if it expires on a weekend? What are you gonna do? Don't fret, just go Monday or Tuesday and you'll be fine. Total cost for this entire process was 150 US per person to do the visa extension. And in addition to that, there was a small micro fee of 57 US cents to do the processing at the bank or something. Funny. Then there were the buses. For us to get to the Migración office and back home again was about eight US per person, so 16 US. And then taxis in and around Salinas and La Libertad was a total of $6. So our travel costs were 22 US and our actual visa extensions were 150.57 US. And we got thrown, we got included, no extra charge, a free bus crash, oh, which yeah. added a considerable amount of excitement and memories to the day. So if you're lucky, you'll get that too. <laughs> Please click the like button. We recommend you watch this video next.